Hi, my name's Justin Davies, and I'm excited to welcome you to the inaugural episode of a new series I'm calling, What's in That Pile? What's in that pile? If you've watched any of my content before, you're probably already familiar with the wall of logs I've got behind me. It's wood that I've gathered here in the cities, people who cut down trees, out in the wilderness, it comes from all over the place. So in this series, each episode, I'll just be grabbing a piece of wood off the wall and we're gonna turn it into something. Usually a vase, sometimes maybe a platter or bowl. But vases are really my go-to. They're my favorite thing to make on the lathe for a handful of reasons. What it really boils down to is that I'm a tree nerd first and a woodworker second. And the reason I love vases so much is it allows me to work with pretty much any type of wood from any type of tree. And a lot of other types of woodworking, you need really clean wood, something that's been milled and kiln dried. And that limits your options a bit. You need a species that's large enough to grow nice, big, clean runs of lumber. But with a decorative vase, I can grab any log off that pile there, throw it on the lathe. I don't know if you can hear that. Sal is on the other side of that door meowing like crazy. He's annoyed that I'm in here filming while he wants his lunch. So I don't know what piece I'm gonna grab yet, but we'll find one, we'll throw it on the lathe. As I turn the piece, I'll share some fun facts about the tree that the wood comes from. And together we'll get to see what the stuff looks like on the inside. I'll be honest, I'm feeling extra pressure for this being the first episode. Uh, I, I don't know what to pick. What's in that pile? All right, I was planning on grabbing a slightly larger piece than this, something taller and wider, but ultimately this nice piece of birch just kept calling my name. I can't really explain why. I, I think for one thing, what's not to love about a birch tree? Particularly the white birch or paper birch, if you will. This is a tree that a lot of people cite as their favorite tree, and it's kind of easy to see why. Uh, it's got really charming bark. Birch forests are just really peaceful. I do like the idea of this is a, you wouldn't need a very big lathe to turn this piece. This is a good example of like a first time size uh, piece of wood if you're, if you're trying to, if you're turning a vase for the first time yourself at home. The one less than optimal thing about the paper birch though is its bark. What you'll often get is paper birch bark will separate. You'll have this kind of thick layer of bark uh, that wants to come off very easily. This feels like it's actually gonna stick around just fine so I'm not gonna worry about it but if you were worried about it if it felt sketchy uh, you could take a chisel or a hatchet and peel all the bark off that's what I would do if this felt a bit more loose but for now let's put it between centers and get to turning and this is my first use of the ash mallet that I made in my Pennsylvania video last week so this is kind of fun for me I have a very very technical method for finding the center of a log now it worked great this is where we find out how accurate my center finding method is. Looks good. Start with our roughing gouge and get to roughing. Yeah, so episode one of What's in the Pile, we've got a piece of paper birch, Betula papyrifera, which is one of the more fun scientific names of any tree, if you ask me. Like, just try to hear Betula papyrifera and not want to say it out loud yourself. Again, the way I do this is the way I do it. Uh, it's probably the wrong way. So do not take this as an instructive video on how to properly turn a vase. Uh, take it as an instructive video on how to appreciate paper birch trees while you watch a person <laughs> make a vase the way they do. In fact, just assume I'm doing it wrong. That's probably the safest bet. Other names for the tree include the white birch, the American white birch, and the canoe birch. It's a northern species for sure. Its native range is found across Canada, Alaska, and in the US it's limited mostly to the far north. It's a shorter lived species that handles heat and humidity poorly and will live for only 30 years or so when planted in warmer climates, though it can reach close to 100 in ideal conditions. Its iconic bark has a real high oil content, which makes it decay at a much lower rate than its wood, so it's not uncommon to come across a hollow ring of birch bark where the wood inside is just fully rotted away. That high oil content means the bark makes for a good crafting material. It's used to make canoes, baskets. It's also a really great fire starter even when wet. All right, it's turned down to round. We got a tenon on here. That was gnarly. It's gonna be even shorter than I anticipated because the wood up top here is so bad that the, the drive spur right here is chewed in to the top of the wood. Let's get the chuck on. Where'd I put, where'd I put the... I woke up this morning, and I had that thing going where I genuinely can't tell if I have allergies or if I'm getting sick. I really hope I'm not getting sick. No thank you. 
Let's roll. As you just saw, the top of this exploded on the lathe. I was not being as careful as I should be. Uh, there are a lot of cracks running through the top of the piece here. Now those cracks don't extend very far down the piece. They, they kind of end right around here, which is why I parted the top off to begin with. I said at the top, I love making vases because I can use any type of wood I, I want. I don't need wood that's perfect. I can use wood that has cracks and checks in it, but that's not a statement that comes without qualifications. Uh, you need to be cautious about just how many cracks, just how stable that wood is. Do those cracks extend all the way down the entirety of the piece? If so, do not throw that on the lathe and try to make a vase out of it. You run a real risk of that piece then basically exploding on the lathe into, into bits and pieces. So we're fortunate here in that that was just there wasn't that much wood that came off, pretty light wood. I was fine, but you don't want to run that risk, so make better choices. That's a statement that I think is pretty much applicable to any choice I make in life, but particularly when I'm doing stuff like that. Make better choices than me. Also, when in doubt, turn it down a little bit and then use a handsaw to cut off the rest. That's what I should have done. I was being lazy. But this is now turned down to round, uh, and it's time to start shaping. What I like to do at this point is just look at the piece that I have here on the lathe and visualize what am I seeing coming out of it. Now, what I would normally do for a piece of wood like this that's smaller, thinner, uh, and a plainer piece of wood, to be honest, I would usually make a really long, slender, narrow neck. But because it's so short, I don't want to do that. What I want to do is preserve as much of the height of this piece as possible since it's already a little bit short. So I'm going to make a very short neck. The paper birch is the official state tree of New Hampshire and the official provincial tree of Saskatchewan. So it's one that I've actually made a couple videos on already, but that also goes to show just how much people love this tree. It's not just people either, animals love the tree too. It's a real important browsing species for moose in the winter time thanks to its sheer abundance in northern forests. Snowshoe hares eat paper birch seedlings, white-tailed deer feed on the tree as well, and many species of bird feed on the tree's seeds, including chickadees, red poles, and grouse. It's also a favorite tree, the yellow-bellied sapsucker who drills holes to get at that sweet, sweet birch sap. I'm mostly happy with where we ended up. So let's get let's get to drilling. All right. If you're buying birch wood at a lumber yard in North America, it's almost certainly from the yellow birch. Its wood is much harder than the paper birch and the tree grows much larger. So paper birch wood is mostly reserved for plywood boxes and small specialty items. Okay. That'll do. Now here's yet another reason why I like making vases is we have a pretty wide variety of finishes we can use on this. If you wanted to use like a wipe on polyurethane, you could do that. If you wanted to use just a simple wax finish only, you could do that. This is a really nice light color we've got on this piece right now. And any finish that you put on at this point is going to darken the piece pretty significantly. And this would be one where I'd be sorely tempted to not add any finish. I would maybe sand it a few grits higher. The upside of that is you get this really nice, beautiful, natural, light, delicate color. So I'd be normally would be very tempted to do that with this piece. The reason why I'm not going to do that is I don't want to cheat you guys out of adding oil to a finished piece. It's just a delight to behold. It's not wildly important what type of finish you use. It's kind of personal preference. Um, it, it's not going to be handled every single day. So I tend to just go based off of color and I really lean toward neutral color oil finishes, primarily because I just want to try to keep the natural tone of the wood as much as possible. But I don't like bringing in like a bunch of yellows or oranges. So I'm just going to go with Walrus Oil brand cutting board oil. Birch wood isn't really known for showing off a ton of flair, although you can find highly figured pieces or heavily spalted ones that would be much more eye-catching. This piece, though, is just a classic example of some warm and understated birch wood. It's not going to turn heads, but hey, it'll warm up any shelf or side table, and also that's the gamble of playing what's in that pile. 
And that was what was in the pile today. Thanks so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and tune in next time when we find out once again... What's in that pile?